Good morning, everyone. <laughs> you guys can stand. We'll just start a second early. That's no problem. Good morning, good morning. I'm so glad everybody could make it this morning. And um, all of you that are joining us online, uh, good morning, welcome. I'm going to pray, and then we'll uh, worship through song in just a moment. Jesus, we're just so thankful for you this morning. We're thankful for you every day, but we're just thankful that we can... Um, build our life on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. And we're just thankful that um, everything has its being in you and from you and to you. God, we're just, we're so thankful uh, for Jesus. And as we remember the story of um, everything that you've done for us this morning, Lord, I pray that you would just renew, renew our hearts, renew our minds. In, in Christ Jesus, Lord, we just lay aside every anxiety and every um, thought that is not of you, God, and we put it at your feet this morning, and we invite you, Holy Spirit, into this time of worship. Lord, have your way this morning. We just open our hearts to you, and we invite you into, into this place. We know you're already here, but we just ask for more of you, more of you this morning in our hearts, in our minds more of you lifted up in our lives. We lift your name high. We lift your name high, Jesus. We worship you this morning. Amen. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior now to our feet now at his feet we bow the one who wore our sin and shame for all to see your name your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King your name your name is victory all praise The fear that held us now gives way to him who is our peace, his final breath. Spirit, I will rise from the ashes of the 
in you Jesus yes thank you that you were the first one the first one to come alive from the dead so that you could redeem all of death for us and bring it um, take away its power you've taken away the power the sting of death for us who are in Christ Jesus thank you for that God Thank you for the eternal life that is in Christ Jesus and that that can start now in our lives. We just ask for more of you, God. We ask for more of you, God. We 
there, I, I feel like there are things in our lives that need to die in some ways so that we can invite you into those places in our life, God. We want more of your life. We want more of your life. So if there are things, there are things in, in our lives that need to come before you and, and, and die in a way so that we can have more of your resurrecting life in our lives, we just place those things on the altar today, God. We just want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. And we want that life. And I'm so thankful that you've promised it, God. You say that those who seek you find you. You're not far away. Those who seek you will find you. And thank you, God. I just know that your promises are even in the midst of, of all of this, that you're right here, Jesus. You're right here with us. Thank you for thank you for that, God. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more love, more.
your power, more of you in my life. Let's sing it over our city. More love, more power, more of you in my life. I will worship you with all of my heart. I will worship you with all of my mind. I will worship you with all of my strength. For you are my God. You are my God.
so thankful for you, your grace and your mercies that are fresh every day. But more importantly, Lord God, we come to praise you and worship you because you give us the opportunity to just be at your feet and receive. Receive all of you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us that opportunity to bask in your presence. I pray today that no matter what we are going through, whether it be the deepest hurts or mourning and that we have, I pray that we can put all of those things at your feet and posture ourselves to draw closer into your presence right now and receive. God, I pray that we can receive all that your Holy Spirit has to offer. We cry unto you. We sing unto you, Lord Jesus. I pray that each individual, no matter where they're at, that they could position themselves to recognize that it is all about you and that you give everything of yourselves that we could give all of ours and have that most perfect relationship. Thank you, Lord God, for that opportunity to love to show us what it means, what that agape love really is, Lord God. I pray we can absorb that today as much as we need for our hearts to be broken, to see what you breaks yours, to be able to love the way you love us so amazingly, with so much grace, with so much mercy, Lord God. Let us give that out today, that same kind of love through whoever we encounter. But let it start with that absorption and that revival in us of what you can do and what you can stir in us so much so that we cannot contain it because you are not a God that can be contained. Your Holy Spirit that lives in us cannot be contained. Outpour from your children today. Give them everything they need to fill them up and let it pour out into their homes and their neighborhoods, block by block, city by city, all for you, Lord God, all for your glory. You know exactly what we need in this very second, God. And we give each moment to you, Lord. I pray that is something that rings out beyond this service. Let it be humble, let it be true, but let it be with your all-powerful Holy Spirit because you do give us more power. You give us more love that we can share. We love you, Lord. This is all for you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us here today. We love you so much. We're so thankful for, you can have a seat. Thank you, worship team, for just drawing us into the presence of the Lord. Just a sweet spirit is here today, and that's what we want to experience. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or whether you are with us online, we thank you. And we also just thank you for your prayers for this church and what 
what God has planned to do in the community this year and has planned to do in each of the leadership. But you know what? If you have prayer requests that you have uh, for your, in, yourself as individuals, for your family members, for the nation, for your city, you know what? We want to partner with you, and we have an opportunity where you can let our intercessory prayer team know of those needs, and you can email the church. There's a link through Uversion all to just be able to partner together because we are a body of believers. We are a family, a church family, and we want to be that. So let us know those prayer requests, and we are here for you. Um, also, we want to let you know that there are several ways to give. Something that's different of giving online is that uh, when you go to the Hope Church website, there is actually, if you go to the Hope Midway section, there is a direct giving link now. Woo! I'm sure everybody online wanted to hear me say, ooh, ah. So if you were not sure how you can give, you can give online through that direct link. You can give directly to the church at our address. And we also have an offering box in the back. But these are the ways that we can use of our resources of what God has faithfully given us to be able to pour out and give to others. And we are so blessed when, with an amazing giving congregation. Um, but as we... As we are going through this process of still upgrading and updating and different things, we have all of these links, and you can follow the sermon through our Uversion event, um, through the Uversion app, which is free. Um, but also to know that we do have a church app that is going to become available. So there's a few edits that we want to do, but Midway, your campus, to next week, I know you're super excited, but next week I'm going to give you directions of how you can download that app and how you can just be with us all week long, right? You can never have too many apps, you know, it's free. So, <laughs> but with that in mind, you know, you can access the registration link to the church, whether it's through your version, whether it's through the church app that we're going to have, whether it's just through the church website. Um, and we also have some special things going on for midweek. Uh, so for midweek this Tuesday, can I have people say Tuesday, January 19th, that's a date to remember, it's Coffee House. We are bringing Coffee House to Tuesday night. And for those that have not been a part of Coffee House, what this is, is this is an opportunity for people to submit those anonymous questions about God, religion, or the church. And so if you're following on version, if you've seen some links that I've posted through Facebook, you can submit those questions anonymously. And it might be something that directly you've had in your mind that you've never felt like you've fully had that answered. Or maybe, you know, your coworkers, your family members are asking you about, about anything with God, religion, or the church, and you haven't been sure how to word it properly. You know what? We have not arrived, right? None of us are, have, can say that we know it all about the Lord, and so we can grow together. And this is an opportunity to have a discussion and look at what the scriptures say and just honor God through truth and living through the word and what it says. And so this is an opportunity for, to do that. So 7 p.m. on Tuesday night, we have that available for you guys. If you haven't been with us for midweek discipleship, I definitely recommend it. I grow a lot, and um, it's just a very sweet group. Um, we also have something else that's coming up on Tuesday night um, the following week, which is the 26th, uh, but we have a special speaker coming, and so we would love for you to join us. Both congregations are going to be joining together upstairs. It's going to be a really good time. So we have Coffee House this Tuesday, the 19th, and then the 26th, we also have an amazing speaker coming to share their heart of what God is challenging them with in this mission season. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, the 26th, we're not going to be able to live stream um, because the area that this particular missionary is going to is a very hotbed of a place, and so we can't really share that online. So unfortunately, those are us online are not going to be able to see that. Um, but if you'd like to come for it, it's going to be an exciting time to get there and to see what God has. Um, before we go any further, you know, the Word talks about us uh, rejoicing with those who rejoice and mourning with those who mourn. And uh, we got a lot of news just uh, today and this last week of some people who have had some people pass. And so I want to pray for those families that have been affected. Um, many of you uh, 
might know Esther. Um, sorry, I just said Esther. Uh, sorry. Uh, many of you might uh, know a couple of different people that are, uh, that are here that have lost people. And Maria is one of them. Her sister has just passed. It's also Belinda's mother. Um, just passed uh, this last week. And she lost another one of her sisters a couple weeks before that, unfortunately. And so they're having to deal with that, unfortunately. Um, we also found out that Nellie and Wilma's father passed away. I just found that out a little bit right before service. So we want to keep them in prayer. They haven't been able to be with us. They've been with us online. They haven't been able to meet with us in person. And also uh, Graciela, our children's director, her daughter-in-law, she just passed away. And we just found out. And so we want to just lift up all these ones right now. Um, and, you know, the great thing is that they're believers, so we know exactly where they're at. Um, but at the same time, we still mourn. And so we just want to pray for these ones who have lost people this last week. Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you that you help to comfort us. Holy Spirit, you are called the comforter. Because when we're shipwrecked, you help to bring us to that safe harbor. God, that place where we can hold on to that rock that is, God, just stronger than us. God, that is higher than us. God, that is so of a strong foundation. And so, God, we pray for these ones who have had people pass. God, we know that their faith with you is strong, but we also know they need your help during this time. God, they need your strength during this time. They need you to to help to speak into their life. So I pray that you would in major ways. God, allow them to see your love, your help, God, as never before. God, we pray that you would help to comfort them. God, your word says that we mourn, but not like others do, but we still definitely mourn. So I pray you help them as they're in a mourning um, phase. God, to be able to mourn in a healthy way. God, and that part of that healthy way is to knowing exactly where they're at right now. God, to be able to celebrate where they're at. God, that they are with you. God, as, as Nellie had texted me about her father, and said he's rejoicing in the presence of the Lord right now. God, and that's such a great way of thinking about it. God, that they are rejoicing with you right now. God, and so we are glad for them. God, we are excited for them. We're excited to see them again. But God, we pray you would help those families right now as we are going through this morning time, God. And I pray that we remember these ones who have passed, that we um, call them, God, that we write to them, God, that we'd help to connect with them. Let them know that they're in our prayers. We don't just pray once on a Sunday and then we forget about something, God. We're a church family. God, we care about one another. And so we want to lift one another up. We thank you so much. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Well, it's important for us to be able to have those times of mourning for those who have lost. But if you have breath in your lungs, the important thing that you can know is that God still has a plan for you here right now. You wouldn't be here if God did not have a plan or a dream for your life. You would not have the breath in your lungs that you're breathing right now, even through a mask. It wouldn't happen if God did not have a plan and a personal thing for you. How many of you are excited about that? All right. Because, you know, a lot of times we don't dream as we get older. A lot of times we forget to dream. You know, kids are known for the dreams that they have. You know, my my oldest dream has always been an engineer, and that's been his constant dream all the way through. So I'm like, you better get better at math. Um, you know, but aside from that, that's always been his, his big dream. My younger one, he like goes all over the place. It's cop, fireman, or like superhero or something. And, uh, you know, and that just kind of goes around. But, you know, kids, we always get to hear about their dreams. But as adults, we don't tend to dream as much. You know, tend, we kind of think, well, that's just, you know, for younger kids, our dreams go from a vocation just to what vacation can I have? You know, it goes from the future just to the weekend, you know, and that's kind of where our dreams kind of end, unfortunately. And I think we sell ourselves short of what God has for us and the life that God wants us to live. And so we're going to look at what God's dreams are for us and how we can dream the dreams that he has for us again. And I want us to look at it a little differently, you know. Um, a lot of times that God has dreams from us, these purposes, they seem so big, and so a lot of times we give up on these dreams. But I want to encourage you today that we want to dream again. If you want to turn to Psalm 126 in your Bibles or in your phones, um, let me give you a little bit of backstory of what has happened here, because without context, it seems very confusing. And so what happens here is that the Israelites had been in exile. They had been um, taken away from their homeland there in Jerusalem, and everything had been destroyed. They came through. They ripped down the walls. They burnt the temple. They torched all the farms. They, everything was being destroyed. They took them all out to Babylon. They were stuck in Babylon for decades and decades and decades. And now they're finally able to come back. And this is a song that they are singing on their way back to coming back to Jerusalem. So it's an exciting time. Psalm 126 verse 1 says, When the Lord brought the exiles back to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, What amazing things the Lord has done for them. 
Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. It's a great way to start a a song right there, right? I mean, absolute pure joy. Because they're saying, we just feel like we're living in a fantasy right now because we could have never have dreamed that this was actually going to happen. See, they had given up on their dream of coming back. They had heard from the prophets and everything else that they were going to come back and that God was going to restore them. And they were excited about it at first, but they had given up on their dream. And so they were so blown away when they were told they were able to come back. I think a lot of times we can live like that. We can give up on a dream pretty easily because we say, why live in a fantasy? You know, I've been waiting so long for something to happen. Nothing's really happened. So why should I continue to dream if it hasn't happened yet? But I want to ask, do you have a God dream? And if that answer is no, I want to encourage you in this. Because again, we can just go through just day by day and have that concentration and have that be our focus. But God's called for us to do something more. Now, what do I mean by a God dream? A God dream is, is not just, uh, you know, some kind of a promotion or more money or a living status. It's, it's so much more than this. A God dream is different. A God dream is selfless. It's motivated by love for others. And it's impossible to do on your own. Okay, so for those of you who are like, I've been looking for that sports car, that's not the God dream, okay? <laughs> allow, me to be, allow me to be honest on that. Okay, God has so much more for you. And I think a lot of times we sell ourselves short. Well, I just, if I get this vacation, this is my dream, this is what I'm saving for. You're selling yourself short of what God has for you. We're just thinking that things that are here on the earth that everybody else is just focusing in on, that that's all that God has for us. But God has so much more. So I, I want us to dream again God's dreams. To God's dreams, they encourage our purpose. The reason you are created, these are the dreams that encourage us. It's important for us to see this because if we're not dreaming, we're simply surviving. Just going through day by day and just, okay, well, what's the next thing I need to do? Instead of actually seeing something more. And that's why so many people are just just weighed down and tired from the day to day because they have lost their God's dream for their life. They have nothing more to look forward to except for this is what I'm supposed to do to get my bills paid, to do what I need to do for my family or whatever else like that. And they've lost sight of why they were created. And this encouragement helps us for because we are made for something more. Now, there's a difference between God's plan for our life and his dream for our life. Okay? We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. God's plans are a series of yeses that combine to build our purposes. So every single week, we're saying, okay, God, what do I need to say yes to? What do you want me to do this week? What is in your plan? What do I do? And this helps to build our purpose. Every single day, we're looking for God's plan and saying, what do you have for me? And that's a part of our purpose. The dream is a different. The dream is our motivation. Because it's one thing to say, okay, God, I'm going to follow you. But if you don't have a dream in there, you're going to forget why you're following. You're going to forget what's the point. And you're going to become a slave and not a child of God. And to say, well, I'm doing it because I'm supposed to instead of I'm doing it because I get to do this together with my father. And that's a very, very big different thing. And God has called us not to be slaves, but to be his children. He says we're co-heirs with Christ. We're able to come together with Jesus and see something different in our lives. God has something different. God's dream motivates us. See, Israel had lost their motivation while they were in captivity. So they were told while they were in captivity to go ahead and to make a life for themselves while they were in captivity. It's not like they were just going to wait around and just, you know, kind of look at the clock for a while, but that they were going to actually say, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to have kids. I'm going to build a home. I'm going to do all these other stuff in captivity. But they started just to get used to the simplistic stuff and just the day-to-day and doing that instead of dreaming. They missed it. I wonder if we can be like this and not really think about any future and not really have a dream. I wonder if we're contempt living like captives, just stuck in the daily cycle and the cycle of it all. Because a lot of us, that's how we live. Well, I'm just here on this earth. I just got to do all this other stuff till I get to heaven. We can be a lot like the Israelites. I'm just going to make my best here while I'm here on earth. No, God has something more for us. He has a dream to motivate us, to allow us to see it in a different way. We're not just supposed to live day by day, but to have a dream and say, okay, God, I'm living for something more. Not just heaven. Because if all you're looking at is heaven and that's all, you're missing what God has for you here on earth. And God has you here. Again, if you're breathing, God has a plan. He has a dream for you. And so we have to look to see what that is. What do we want to see in this in our lives? Do we dream? Maybe you already know the dream that God's given you. 
Some of you in this room already know. And you're just like, yeah, I absolutely do. I know exactly what God has, you know, and I know what he has for my life. And I know what he has, but it's been such a long time. You've waited a long time praying for that salvation of a loved one, of a coworker, somebody within your cycle. And you say, I've been praying. I've been waiting for so long. I know it's a dream that God's giving me. This person will come to know the Lord, but I, I haven't seen it happen. Maybe your dream is to grow more in the Lord, and you've been praying, you've been praying, and praying for a breakthrough, and you're saying, I just haven't seen that breakthrough yet, and so maybe you're giving up on that dream. Maybe God's put a ministry part in your life of something that God's wanting you to do that goes way beyond yourself. Again, this is something you can't do on your own. You need God, and you've given up on it because it's just been so long. Maybe it's revival for our nation, for our city, for ourselves. Maybe you're doing that, and you say, I've been praying for so long, and I'm not seeing anything. In fact, it's getting worse. So you've given up on your God's dream. But I want to encourage you, continue to pray and work as you wait. God is still doing things in the background that we don't understand, that we don't know. He was doing this even within the captives there in Babylon. God was still moving there in the midst. And he said, look, I I want you to continue to dream, not just to work and being stuck in the daily cycle, but I have things, again, parts of plans every single day that I have for you to do. And I want you to focus on that. But continue to keep that dream alive. That dream motivates the plans and the purposes of of our lives every single day. We don't want to lose that. Because life may darken the light of our dreams. But we can't forget that this isn't all there is, what you're going through right now. Ephesians 2.10 says this. We are God's masterpiece. He's created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God has a dream for you. Does that mean that dream is going to be easy? No, and if you think it is, you've never read the Bible. The dream that God had for so many people took a lot of hard years till it came through. Think of people like Joseph, who God had a great dream and gave him an actual dream of him being and ruling and helping out. And he's like, oh, this is so great. He didn't realize that that dream entailed so much more than he ever could have imagined. Being beaten up and sold as a slave, accused of rape, thrown in prison, forgotten in prison. All these other things that had happened, he never thought that that would be a part of it. But God was using this. God was using this. God has a plan, a dream for your life. And though it might seem dark now, God is preparing a masterpiece. It's important for us to see this. I mean, this is what amazed the Israelites. He hadn't forgotten them in the dream. And God hasn't forgotten you either. In fact, he's been working with you the whole time. I want us to look at that last part there, verse 3 in Psalm 126 again. So yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. This phrase here, amazing things in Hebrew, means to grow and to twist together. What does that mean? It means that he's taking the bad and the good that happened in their life and praying it together to grow it to create something new. I mean, think of all the stuff that Joseph went through. If Joseph went through from being a kid with a dream to being in charge, he would have missed his areas to mature to be who he needed to be. He would have lost it. But because he had been in the lowest of the low in the prisons, he knew what they had gone through. Because he had been unequally uh, treated by the law, he knew how to create and give out justice in the right way. There were all these things that had happened to him that seemed so negative to anybody on the outside. But God took, and this is important for us, God could take the bad of this world and the good of his love and create a masterpiece in your life. This is what God does. Don't miss the opportunity to learn through the pain and the struggles and the hard times that you have right now. God has something that he's going to twist together. And it's going to amaze you when you step back and look and say, I never would have seen that in a million years, that this would help me accomplish the dream that God has for me. But this is what dreams are that God does. And this is what he can allow us to see in his life. But how many of you say, well, I really hate to wait for that dream to happen? (laughs) I mean, Joseph had to wait 17 years, you know? <laughs> I mean, a lot of us hate to wait. The Israelites had to wait decades and decades and decades and decades. And many of us hate to wait. And the Israelites didn't want to wait for them either to see the restoration of Israel. That's why we get verse 4. It says, restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. So what were they saying? They're saying, well, we just don't want to wait. Because a stream would come into the desert and life would just flourish. They had these things that are called flash floods. And uh, in the desert, you have no idea when they're coming. They just kind of come out of nowhere, and then bam, when they're done, there's all this life that comes out of nowhere that was dormant. These things that weren't there before, that as soon as this water hits it, it comes to life. So they're saying, God, this is how we want Jerusalem to be. When we get there, we want you to come in and help us to bring it to life again because they knew it was going to be hard. 
They knew it was going to be difficult. Jerusalem had been destroyed. The walls were torn down. The temple was destroyed. The farms were all destroyed. They had all these things, and they knew what they were going back to. They knew what they were going to see. They were going to have to rebuild Jerusalem. See, the dream that God gave was exciting, but it would take a lot of effort. This is something that we have to see in our lives as well. God, we just want to see it happen real fast. We want like a flash flood, allow this dream to come through, and allow you to see it. And sometimes God does that. It's not that he doesn't. Sometimes God allows something to happen right away in our dream, and he's like, wow, that's awesome. You know, God speaks a word into your life, and it happens right away. And that's an awesome thing to happen. But a lot of times you have to realize there's going to be effort to allow that dream to happen. Because, again, we grow through the effort. It's that twisting together. And a lot of times we have to have that growth, and it's going to take some time for that to happen. But this is what they're asking. They want to happen. God, please bring life to these dead places. But sometimes we have to wait. Now, for some people that might be here today, you might say, well, you're talking about these God dreams that we should have for our life, but our country's kind of going down the tubes, so I can't really dream about something in the future when I'm seeing what's happening to us. And that's unfortunate what I've seen a lot of people doing. We've given up on our God dreams because we're just paying attention to what's going on in the news and saying, uh, how can I think of anything else when this is our reality? And so we've looked at that and we've had an issue with it. But I want to encourage you, God's dream brings change. This should encourage us. This should actually encourage us. People have realized politics isn't going to bring change. People have seen the extremes on both sides and said, I don't want to have anything to do with it. They have zero answers. I think people are starting to open up their eyes and say, you know what? I think that God has a lot better than any other man. Because unfortunately, there's been a lot of false idols that people have made of man and said, well, they have the answer. And they've been following a person and not following Christ. And Jesus is saying, no, I got something more for you. I got something different. I got something better. The one we follow is Jesus, not some stinking politician. Sorry. (laughs) But I want to encourage you. This is the perfect time to have a God dream. This is the perfect time to look for it and to see it and see what God has for you. I mean, people's idols are falling. False prophets are being pointed out and saying, okay, don't follow that moron anymore. You saw what they said was wrong. You never follow them again. How about you follow Christ? People are starting to see this. They're starting to see the difference. They get back to his word instead of saying, okay, I'm just going to listen to what's on YouTube or listen to what's on this podcast or everything else. How about I just get back to his word and follow him? People are starting to dream God dreams again by getting back to the author of the dream. And that's the only way we get there. Because there's so many people that are saying that they want revival. Revival is not going to happen by politicians. It's going to be happening by people following God's dream for their lives. This is important. For revival, you can't revive something unless it's dead. I think the church in America saw how much it's been dead for so long. They're saying, no, we need to revive it again. We need to revive what God has. We need his dream again in our lives. We need something different. It's only going to happen by following God's dream for our life because Jesus has the answers people have been looking for. And if we follow his dream, it's going to bring change. John 10.10 says this, The thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and destroy, but my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. We've seen what the enemy has done for so long. has stolen and has killed and has destroyed so many things. But Jesus brings so much more. I mean, think about what the life that Jesus brings us that helps this world that's lost in confusion. Jesus is the answer to our problem with sin. He's the answer to our separation from God. He's the answer to guilt and condemnation. He's the answer to fear and worry. He's the answer to relationship problems. Jesus is the answer to sickness and disease. Jesus is the answer to racism, sexism, treating everyone with contempt or malice. This is the life that Jesus desires to give. This is that rich and satisfying life, and it doesn't have to be a dream. This is what he wants for you and for me. This is what he wants for our city. He wants for our community, what he wants for our country. And it happens by us saying, I want to follow his will, his dream. This should motivate us. We look at TV, yeah, of course. You know, you look at the news and stuff like that, that will discourage you. But when you look into what God's dream is, that will motivate you and say, God, use me. Don't just allow it to happen. God, use me. Let me be a part of it. These are people who came back from Babylon saying, we're going to rebuild Jerusalem. It's not going to be a dream of someone else's of a wish. It's going to be a reality because God is going to use us to make the change. 
We have to have that same idea. God, use me to make the change. This is a part of why Jesus came in the first place, for his kingdom to come. His will, his dream to be fulfilled. And that's what God wants to use you and me to be able to do. That's encouraging. Now, I know I, I want to see it come quickly like water in the desert like the Israelites did. <laughs> but again, sometimes it may take time. Sometimes it goes like the rest of our psalm today, 126, verse 5 says this. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They will weep as they go to plant their seed, but they will sing as they return with the harvest. And what is this talking about with them weeping and, and how they're planting? Well, when they were to build up Jerusalem, again, they only had so much seed to use. They were given things from the Babylonians. They were given some stuff, but they only had so much seed. And they knew if they planted it, that meant less food that was in their family's mouths. They said, well, what, what can I do with this? This is all I have. So I have to say, what, what am I going to do? They only had so much seed to dedicate, so they had to make wise decisions. Okay, this is food that can go into my family's mouth or I can plant it knowing that it's going to yield more. What do I do? I have to make this decision. The same decision many of us have to make as well. We only have so much time, we only have so much money, so much energy, and we need to make decisions as well. God, this is all I have, and, and I can use it right now for something important for me right now where I can plug it into the kingdom and allow it to do something greater. What do I do? And it's not an easy decision to make. I know the church answer is, of course, you give it all to God. I mean, that, that's a church answer, okay. But I love that the Bible is real. And it's written by real people. And they're saying, this is a hard decision to make. I need to have wise decisions of what to do with my seed. I need to know what I'm actually doing. I, I have to have this. Because it might not seem like much, but they knew that this little bit that they put down, that it would make a change. When I say, well, pastor, I, I don't really have too much to be able to give to my friends, to my community or anything. I, I might not have much. I'm not that influential of a person or whatever garbage that we try to tell ourselves. You might see it just being a little bit, but God says, if you're willing, I'm going to create something great with it. I'll create change. You give me your little bit, I'll show you what I can do. He gives the lot. And that's the amazing thing. It's not about us. It's about what God does. It's an awesome thing to see. I believe that God's dream for you and for me will bring a change to our country, our city, or our community, or I wouldn't be a pastor. I mean, honestly, if I didn't think that God was going to do something different, if I didn't think that God was going to use you in a great way, I wouldn't be here. Because I'd be wasting your time, I'd be wasting my time. But I know what God can do. And I'm encouraged on what God can do. Part of my God's dream is him using all of us together to change this community. That's part of God's dream for me. But what does God have for your dream? What does he want to do? How are you playing a part of it? What are you going to be doing as a part of this? Because if we want to see God change our community, our city, and everything that we see around us, it's going to take effort. And the effort starts here. Second Chronicles 7.14, a very famous scripture says this. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their land. It starts with us getting our pride out of the way and seeking God's dream if we really want to see restoration. So that's what the Israelites in captivity had to do. They, they had it pretty easy, generally speaking, historically speaking, underneath Babylon. They really did. They were able to have their families. They were able to work there. They had a job. They had safety. They had all these other things underneath them. They, they really kind of had it kind of calm, kind of okay for the most part underneath Babylon. But these people said, no, no, we're going to do something more. It's not about what's good for me, what's comfortable for me. It's about what's best for all. So they went outside of themselves, and they helped out, and they reached out, and they shared. They wanted to see restoration. And what does it mean to seek God's face? To seek God's face means to seek his presence, to seek his presence. And I believe that when we are in God's presence, that's when we actually get to hear his dream for our life. It's the only way. It's the only way to truly get to his dream in our lives is to hear it be in God's presence and to say, God, I'm giving you everything. I'm pushing everything else aside and just focusing in on you. It might be planning with tears. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. A lot of times when we're in God's presence, he'll expose stuff in our pride. Because he's even said, you know, in terms of the wicked ways, there might be some stuff that he's going to be using a scalpel to kind of take out. But how many of you know that when you take something out that you can heal correctly? There's a lot of that stuff that, happens, happen, that has to happen in our lives for us to live the dream that God has for us. 
And so being in his presence, God might say, well, you know what? There's that pride that's there. That's that anger that's there. That's that arrogance that's there. That's, you know, all these little things that we might think aren't a big deal that when we're in his presence, they get exposed because he's holy. He's flawless. He's, he's unique. And, and so when we're in his presence, we see these things, but God shows us these parts so we can come out greater and being ready to live the dream that he has for us. And that's why I love it. It says, you know, we might be there planting those seeds in tears, but we'll harvest with shouts of joy. God, that was a hard time in your presence, all right? That was, that was not an easy time. No one likes the cowbell, all right? That was not an easy time, but man, this is who I wanted to be because you're living the life you were created to live. That's why it shouts of joy. Yes, that was a difficult time, but who I am now, how I came out, this is who I was meant to be, and so I'm excited because of what God has for me, and this is what we can be encouraged for as well. So how are we looking to see this, this time of, of restoration? Well, there's a couple of things we're going to do as a church and as all the campuses are actually doing all together. First is we're calling the 714 challenge, which is based off of this scripture. We're asking you to do is to pray, and you can just set your alarm on your phone. It's really, really easy to do. Um, set your alarm on your phone, either 714 a.m. or 714 p.m. or both, depending on what you want to do. And just saying, God, I'm just going to seek your face. I'm going to seek your presence right now. I'm going to be focusing and say, God, what's the dream that you have for me? I just want to focus in, and this isn't just to take the place of your normal prayer time. This is in an addition. This is something different, because a lot of times our prayer life, unfortunately, can become rote, and we just kind of come the same thing that we kind of talk about all the time, which is not a good thing. We'll talk about that some other time. But this is some time just to say, God, I want to break away from my mold by doing it at a different time. So if you're driving to work at 714 or you're having to log on to work or whatever at 714, do it at 714 at night. If you're working at night, then do it at, you know. And if you can do both, that's great. We want to encourage people to do this. But not only are we asking if people pray all throughout this week, we're also calling on a time of fasting. So whether either Tuesday or Wednesday, we're asking people to fast and to pray. Now, what does fasting mean? Fasting is basically not doing something and praying instead of that. So normally it's food. I'm not going to eat my lunch. I'm going to pray during the time that I would normally eat my lunch or eat my dinner. For me, the best fast for me is media. If I, anytime that I would use media, I just pray instead of that. That's just better for me because not skipping a meal. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, but media, it's, uh, I'm sorry, my generation, it, it hurts. <laughs> so, you know, but, you know, that's, that's the time that I spend more time too. And so for me to be able to do that, that just is helpful. So whatever is, e- is the best fast for you, and that's the time. Why? Because our country is needing help this week. It's not like we're saying this for no apparent reason. They're needing help, and it's not going to be help from anybody else but God. If we really want to see us to come together, to be able to see what God wants to do, it's going to be God that's going to be bringing people together. That's the only unity we'll ever find is through people coming to see Jesus. And so this is what we want to pray for, that there would be unity in the nation underneath Jesus. But wait, there's more. Also, Friday from noon to Saturday noon, we're going to be opening up the LaGrange campus for prayer 24 hours. So if you get off work way late at night, you have a graveyard shift or something like that, and you want to come at 2 in the morning, the church is going to be open during that time. The only thing you need to do is to go online to register because we, can't, we can only have so many people there at one time. We're also, for our campus, going to have a two hours of prayer on Friday night from 6 to 8, just specifically here. Why? Because we believe what God can do. You might say, okay, well, you're doing a whole week's worth of stuff. It's a 714 thing, and that's why you have it in your notes. <laughs> 714 thing, a day of fasting, you know, a time of prayer. Do we really think it's going to create that much change? Yes. Yes. There is power in prayer. I believe that there will be change that happens. But also know this. It's also the start of the change. Because you're going to start to see things. You're going to say, wow, that was really good. I planted this little time, 714. It wasn't much of a big thing. I mean, it was a little bit hard, you know, because it's out of my day. And I planted this. And wow, what did I get out of this? This time with God, that was amazing. I want to plant more of that. This fasting time that I had, and and God spoke to me in ways that he's never spoken before. I want to do that more. I want to get involved in that more. Spending out time outside of my, on the weekend that I think about of just doing whatever, and now I'm concentrating on God, that's going to help to change us. These little things that we're planting now are going to harvest shouts of joy, and we're going to be encouraged to do more and more of this in our life. Amen? It's important. Spending time in his presence this is going to help us to re- be refreshed, to be encouraged, and to be inspired, to be motivated towards God's dream for our lives. But I want to encourage you with this as we close. Notice that in Psalm 126 shows they didn't just pray, they planted. 
And this is unfortunately what the church in the West has done so long that kind of drives me up the wall. God, we pray that you will bring revival. God, do something great in our country. God, we're giving everything to you. We know that you are the Lord. We are the master. You're going to work, and you work in people's hearts. We thank you so much. I'm going to go back to my daily work. And God says, uh, yeah, I've created you to plant, not just to pray. Prayer is where it starts. There's no way around it. There's no quick way. I mean, the streams in the desert, God, just do something. No, no, it happens through prayer. That's where everything has to start. There's no shortcuts. It's just like farming. You might want a shortcut, but no, you got to actually go out and do the work. There's no shortcuts. So prayer is where it starts. But planting is a part of that of us actually doing the work. It's a part of it. If you think about it, if they didn't get involved in the dream, it would have just been a wish. And unfortunately, that's what we do a lot of times. I wish our city would change. I wish a crime rate would go down. I wish people would come to know Jesus. I wish that coworker would be able to stop having that stupid anger that they have. You know, <laughs> all these wishes that we have, but what do we actually do about it? God's dream is only a wish if we don't get involved. God's called us to do something more than just say, I prayed, so therefore I did my job. Prayer it starts, then we plant. We have to get involved. Volunteer opportunities aren't for someone else. That attitude has to go. I say, God, allow me to be used. Allow me to be planting. I'm not just waiting around for someone else to do it. God, what is the need? What is the need? And that's a hard thing to say because this is what we normally do. Okay, well, we need help in kids' activities downstairs. Well, I don't have any kids right now, so, you know, I'm good. We need help out with tech. Yeah, I'm not sure if I know that. It's very easy for us to do this, but this is what the Israelites did when they were coming back to Jerusalem. They said, you know what? We're going to have to rebuild walls. We're going to have to build a temple. We're going to have to farm. And you know what? We're not qualified to do all these things, but I'm going to help where they need me because otherwise nothing's going to get done. Jerusalem would have just been a pile of rubble and the dream would have never been fulfilled if they didn't say, what do you need? Allow me to help out with it. In fact, that's what Nehemiah said when he came back. He came back to see the exiles, this leader, Nehemiah. He came back and he looked over there and he saw people were just working on themselves and they weren't working at the rest of the city. He said, look, it's all open. Nothing's gonna happen. You've lost the dream. You came in here with a great idea here in Psalm 126, but then you got caught in your own place and said, this is where I'm at. This is my little area. I'm going to stay here and not help with anybody else. He said, you're missing it. You're missing it. We have to come together as a community if you want to see change in the community. We have to come together as a church if we want to see change in our community. I want to encourage you on this. It's important for us to see God has something for us to give to everyone. 1 Peter 4.10 says, For God is giving each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. And for those of you who want to stop and say, my spiritual gift is to pray, again, that's where you start. The spiritual gift, that phrase there, is a gift of grace. And saying, God, you've given me all these things for free. What can I give for free away as well? You've given me all these things. You never asked a thing for me. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? And just having that mentality, it changes everything. It changes everything. I love this uh, definition of the spiritual gifts. The spirit-empowered service to the church is to carry out his plan for his people. If we really want to see God's dream come, we have to say, God, what can I do? What can I do? How can I get involved? Because God's dreams come true through the perseverance of his people. That's where everything changes. That's where everything shifts. Because again, for Israel to be able to function, it would take many people doing different tasks. But they came together with their dream and they thrived. Unfortunately, so many times we rely on somebody else to lead the charge and we don't get involved. We're talking about this dream right before Martin Luther King Day tomorrow, who was obviously his most famous speech is the I Have a Dream speech. Fortunately, when Martin Luther King passed away, his motivation, which was said in that speech of why he was actually doing the things he did, who picked up the mantle? People who looked at him and said, oh, wow, that's such great. We can rally behind that guy. We love that dream that he has and, and what he's doing. And then they saw some things happen, but then it stopped and it ended. And that's why we're at where we're at today. Because nobody picked up the dream. If we're just relying for someone else to live the dream and we're not being a part of it, we're never going to see the change that God wants to bring. 
God has something more for every single one of us. Don't just say that's somebody else's job, that's somebody else's dream. God has a dream for you. He wants to work inside your life to create real change. You might say, well, God's dream for us might be pretty hard. That's true. That's why we weep as we plant. It might be difficult. We have to get over ourselves and say, okay, God, what do you have? But we'll sing as we return with the harvest, as it says there in the psalm. And I know that we're encouraged from what we want to think about what revival is going to look like, and we're excited about that, and we sing about that, and we pray for that. But if we don't plant, we'll never see the harvest. So let's do that today. Let's pray, let's get involved, and let's plant the seeds. As the worship team comes up, I want to encourage you. For those of you who have said, I've been praying for God's dream in my life right now, and I've been praying for so long, but you've never gotten involved, what this is going to do, it's going to get you fed up. I've been praying for so long and I've never seen a change, but if we're not getting involved, you're just going to be so frustrated. The flip side is true. If we're just getting involved and we're not praying, you're going to get burnt up. Say, oh yeah, I'm going to work and I'm going to help out and whatever you need me, but you're not in that time of prayer. You're going to get totally burnt up. You're going to wonder what happened. But if you pray and you work, then you're going to start to see your life build up. This is what God has for us. And it might seem simplistic, But the Israelites, the reason they were able to sing with joy is because they knew what it was going to take, but they knew what it was worth it. And I believe that God's dream for you and for me is worth it. So I want to encourage you today, if we all can stand. With every head bowed, every eye closed. We're going to do something just a little bit different today, and we're just going to have a time... We're just seeking God's face together. Because remember, seeking his face is seeking his presence. Some of us, we need to start to dream. Say, God, show me your dream you have for my life. I've just been stuck living like a captive, stuck in the daily cycle. But God, I want to dream your dream for my life. I need motivation to follow your plan. Ask God for it. I guarantee he'll give it to you. It might not be like a stream of the desert and it'll happen in one time of prayer. It might take a while of planting in tears. But I guarantee you, you will harvest with joy when you find that motivation, that dream for your life. For those of you who've just been praying and not gotten involved, may God talk to you and challenge you. Again, God will not condemn, but he will convict. And conviction is for our good. To help us to get to where we're supposed to be. Maybe God's saying, well, you're wanting to see a change in our community. You're wanting to see a change in our area. That change starts with you. How can you get involved? What can God do in your life? You might say, I don't have too many talents. I guarantee if you just call me up and say, hey, pastor, how can I get involved? We will find a place. I guarantee it. It's a call every single pastor wants. (laughs) At the same time, for those of you who have been helping out, we have amazing volunteers who give up so much of themselves. We don't want to see you burnt out either. I want to encourage you to get involved in prayer like you never have before. Get into his presence. Seek out his word. Allow his word to encourage you as you pray that he can bring up your scriptures to you and speak this life over you. You need to know how well you are valued by your father. For those of you who have been praying and have been working, allow God to continue to bring that dream alive. Ask him to continue to motivate you. Ask him to continue to speak to you. Jesus, we thank you so much. As we're having this time, we're just seeking your face. I pray, speak to every single one of us, myself included. Fresh dreams are always the best. I pray you would speak to us all. Allow us to see the direction you are giving us. God, we know that you have daily plans for us that all come together for our purpose. But God, we want that dream, that motivation, God, of of you putting something in our heart and saying, this is what we're working towards. God, and it's different for every single person. We know the dream we have as a church. But God, you have individual dreams you've given people as well. I pray you would speak them over them. Allow them to be encouraged. Allow them to be lifted up, inspired. 
that they can see the great joy, even through the hard times, seeing how you're twisting the bad times, God, but you're bringing it with the greatness and the goodness of your love, creating something new, this masterpiece in you. I pray that we'll be encouraged even in the waiting. God, knowing that we will harvest with joy, we thank you. We give you this time as we seek your face together. God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Forever all 
my days hallelujah God, we look to you in this time. We thank you for continuing to speak to us, that you have a fresh word for us today, that you do still have dreams for us. Like Pastor JJ said, as long as we're alive, as long as we have breath in our lungs, you're dreaming with us, you're dreaming over us, and we can tap into that or we can ask you for what those dreams are for our lives. Reveal to us, God, just this next this next step for this next season, God. And I just pray that we would be able to be faithful to that. And I pray that you would just pour out your presence and your joy that every every move that we make, every step that we take in step with you, would um, also contain the fruit of your spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you for everything that you're doing in each one of our lives, God. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>